Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Barbados. We are... Uh, starting the chase down here to to try and catch uh, Benek at 3,000 here we are uh, let's see a little bit behind Uh, a little bit behind the plan here, transition level is 3,000 feet. Uh, Q&H is... What, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. come on. Q&H is 1012. Weather... See the winds are one zero zero thirteen, no gusts. Slash thirteen slash zero. And we'll hit that. And we are now in the descent. Barbados. Pretty cool view at night, I would say. Um, so, I'll take a quick look here at the descent checklist. Any elevations automatic. FMS nav performance data is set. DHMDA. We gotta get that. Alright, come on. Away. Thank you. And we haven't added the approach. I said, the thing is, I've got four places where I have <laughs> Navigraph charts. And so that can be a bit. Problematic. All right. Final pro. Okay. Decision height is sixteen hundred or six hundred rather. And that flashes until we come over here and click that. I mean, way high. But the cool thing about this airplane is it's easy to get down. So one of the tricks for flying at night, never do your private pilot uh, check ride. One of the questions you are likely to get is, at night, how can you tell if you are about to fly into clouds? Now, of course, this is this is a simulator, so you can see it pretty well. But the answer to that question is if there are lights on the ground that are getting blacked out, right? So if you've got like, let's go out here. You've got like some lights here that are, that are, you know, like lights like this. And then all of a sudden you got a black spot over here. And then more lights on this side. It's pretty likely that you've got a cloud in there. So that's one of the trick questions they like to ask. Alright, that is set. Arrival briefing. Let's do that. Alright. Uh, final approach course is 091. Glide slope intercept is Elixir at 2000. So I'm going to bring this down to 2000. Alright. Uh, airport elevation. Uh, well, 
minimums are 600 airport elevations, 170 that's automatic in this airplane. Mist approach climb straight ahead to a Lockheed, that would be a teardrop entry rather than a parallel. Why do we like teardrops rather than parallels? Because parallel entry is the only type of entry, holding pattern entry, holding pattern entry that is, that puts you outside of protected airspace. And there's one place I do not like being, it's outside of protected airspace while IFR. So, hit Benek, we come down here, 180, left hand turn, it's 10, it's 11 miles from Oledo, uh, which is a fly by waypoint, not a fly over waypoint, which is why you can see that we cut inside of it here. Fly by waypoints don't have a circle around them, fly over waypoints do have a circle around it. So, why is this? A fly over waypoint right here at the threshold because that's the missed approach point, that's why. Uh, so you can come down to the missed approach altitude of 600 and level off and fly along here until you hit the threshold of runway 09, which is a fly over waypoint. If you don't have the field in sight by then, you are going around. Uh, and actually it's not that you don't have the field in sight, it's a, you would have to have the runway environment in sight. And what does that mean? I'll tell you that in a second. Brantley Adams traffic, Caribbean 402 on a 11 mile left base, runway 09 or Brantley Adams. Uh, the runway environment is... Be the Pappy lights could be the approach light system in this case a high intensity approach light system could be the runway end identifier lights the REILs could be the threshold markings or lights could be the runway uh, side lighting could be the touchdown zone markings or lights any of those things Let's see if it'll give me a uh, VNAV right now any of those things are considered the runway environment we can see the runway right over there uh, and that means uh, That means we are not going below minimums here. So, We have Oledo at 3,000 or above, and the airplane was not going to maintain that, meet that restriction, so therefore We have to fly the airplane. Every once in a while, you gotta do something wacky like fly your own airplane. You know? Completely wacky. Doing a halfway decent job of it. I 
Brantley Adams traffic, Caribbean 402, turning a 10 mile final, runway 09, Brantley Adams. Alright, now we can come down to 2000 for Elixir. I don't know why we're not getting. Indications. We're getting left right indications, which is great. But I would prefer to have, you know. Three D indications. This is a left this is a L nav V nav. Gear down. Go flaps full. And yes, I'm flying this like a drunken sailor right now. So, uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit of power. Uh, no, 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 we're all right, we're all right. One four from Elixir. See how that, I don't know, what the, I don't know what the, uh, PFD indications are telling me I, I just don't trust the the guidance on the PFD and I'm talking like the vertical and, and lateral guidance alright Grantley Adams traffic Caribbean 4025 mile final runway 09 or Grantley Adams now it's a little better now I sort of trust it speed's good A little bit left, a little bit right, of course, rather. Heading of about zero nine five seems to work pretty well. Airspeed is good. It's trying to hold that attitude. That to, what is it about two and a half degrees nose down. Keep the airspeed. Looking pretty good. Alright. 
Bentley Adams traffic, Caribbean 402, short final runway 09 at Grantley Adams. Alright, got a little bit low there. Approaching minimum. Come back a little bit to the right. 500. Minimum. Minimum. Land landing. This is where you don't want to get too wacky and start making big corrections. It's gusty, I can feel it. A little bit of power out here. It's just, see, the speed was picking up. 200. And I was getting high, so that means you gotta get rid of some energy. 100. Guess you forgot 50, to turn their landing lights on. 40. 30. 20. I'm not landing any lights on. I said, I'm my taxi and takeoff lights on. So that was my first nighttime landing in this airplane. It wasn't too, too bad. It wasn't anything super special either, but... Uh, and by the way, it's not nighttime out. I can't figure out why my simulator uh, insists that it's nighttime out. Uh, it's uh, the timing, the time, the system time for the sim is always off, and I, I just don't understand why. Um, but such is life. Grantly Adams traffic, Caribbean 402 is clear of runway 09 or Grantly Adams. I'm going to take. Uh, I want to take parking position nine here. I don't know if I rate parking if I if I rate gate nine or not. This might be like a those dudes over there are probably waiting for me. That's all right. Um, I might be parking my Chevy Nova in the Mercedes spot, but. Uh, such is life, right? Alright. And we'll come over here. Let's get some wheel chocks and some ground power. And let's shut down engine number one. Engine number two. We can get the prop brake on. And we got our power and such from the ground now. We'll turn that off. We'll turn our lights off. We've already blinded anybody who's standing in front of the aircraft. Uh, but I, and I think we're in pretty good shape. I'm sure there's other things I need to do, but that's all right. We'll just let it be. Let's see. Ground power is on, and so in order, f so I'm on. I am flying a uh, a virtual Caribbean flight, and I can't shut it down until. I shut both engines down. So, here we are. 
And, uh, yeah, I would rate that a pretty successful, pretty successful landing. Let's open the, the doors, get the tail prop. Um, so, not bad. Not too bad. Let's see what our landing rate was. Uh, landing rate was 245 feet per minute. Yeah, I mean, it's alright. It's alright. Not the best landing you'll ever see, but uh, I feel pretty good about it. And I hope you guys enjoyed that little approach and landing, and we will see you again next time.